Yes. Okay. Okay, so you have seen the uh, the new components, or at least uh, one part, let's say, getting the data in. In the afternoon, we'll have the other part, getting the data out, so discovery and uh, getting them out uh, using the cloud, and uh, and uh, also some self uh, work by you. Uh, you. Uh, but then we also have an implementation plan because so far we have been uh, now working on this, developing, uh, uh, also getting together because it's a uh, it's a new. Uh, a new way of operating because we work now with UDOT and we had not worked before with them and so far we always had uh, in fact everything under our own control you would say yeah? let's say on our own machines and that worked uh, nicely over the years and also a uh, very close cooperation and then we start with UDOT and then we had to learn uh, yeah more or less with a different lingo it's uh, a different culture also because they are more from the big machines and, and the academic computing centers and we are more from the data management and we used to do everything ourselves and that that yeah, there was a culture that, that we had to overcome, and uh, I would say we are now a very nice team. We uh, we now understand each other. We we um, we have still some misunderstandings because the word CDI it means Common Data Index, and I think it also is a, a collaborative uh, data infrastructure in in the in the words of of UDAT. So we have two CDIs which are something quite different, but we can overcome this. <laughs> But anyway, we, we made uh, progress, very good progress in the, in the last 18 months, and we, we now, yeah, today, we could show you already the import, uh, how it works, in, in a live session, and also we'll, in the afternoon we'll show you a better version of the uh, CDI interface, and then in the next month we, we're going to finalize all this, and we have to roll it out. And rolling out means in practice that all these 110 plus data centers have to get connected to the new system, while in the same time keeping the old system running. Till the moment that we say everything is under control, and now we're going to move, we're going to make it public. And that will be a day, of course, that we um, yeah, will celebrate, and that, that's planned early 2019. How we celebrate, I don't know yet, but we'll, we'll find a way, you know. It's, uh, we're very good at parties, so don't worry. <laughs> if you look at the main components that we have discussed before, we have uh, the replication manager, that's uh, the base station that will have to be installed at each of you uh, of your data centers, or you continue with the interim solution. But there also there there will be changes, and those changes are not not known yet, but they will be developed in the coming uh, weeks. Then we have the import manager, which is uh, let's say the process running on the machines at, at Maris, and that uh, that steers in fact the, the metadata and the data through the system, and makes sure that the metadata lands in the in the, let's say, the database of the CDI, and while the data, they land in the UDOT cloud. And then they are, let's say, con connected together. That means that the CDI ID is connected to a, a PID. A PID is a, is a data identifier, a unique identifier. And these PIDs, they are, you know, they are somewhere in the cloud, but the PID gives us a handle to be able to find them and to retrieve them and to make them available for uh, handing out or for uh, analyses. Then we have this HTTP API, which is in fact the UDOT, uh, you say the, yeah, we communicate with this HTTP API, sorry. That's where we do all the, uh, the uh, communication between the different components. So the replication manager talks to the API and the import manager talks to the API and the retrieval downloading system talks to the API. But that's all internal, that, that's simply the technical components, they talk to each other and uh, they have some authentication, uh, authorization, etc. But you don't have to worry about all these things. That, that's uh, taken care of. And then, of course, we have the CDI user interface, which, which will be the communication to the outside world. And this also has many uh, different forms, because as you see in AWNet and in uh, Black Sea Scene and in GOCs, we have different interfaces, but they're all more or less virtual subsets of, the, of, the, of, of one big engine in the middle. And we can give them different styling, we can give them different layout, etc. but they're all run by the same engine. So we have one engine, one database, and then on top of that we have many flavors to, to hand it out, to bring it over to user communities, to their... We even have some national ones. Let's say that people say, I am joining CDATANET, I, make my, I enter my metadata and data, make it part of the community, and at the same time I want an interface on my own website, only restricted to my data. That's, that's very easy. Let's say it takes us, takes us half a day almost to make that. And if you have some styling issues, some colors, yeah, they can be added. And that's a way that you can... You can do a win-win situation, let's say you can use the engine also for your own website to power it up for your data. And then still using the whole infrastructure, the cloud, all the processes, etc., 
to to uh, you know, to power it up to your users in a very professional way. We have uh, in the project we work with UDOT, and we have in practice we work with five UDOT centers, and uh, one is CEC from Finland. We have uh, STUC from UK. We have DKRZ from Germany, Sinica from Italy, and GRNet from uh, Greece. And they have uh, a number of different tasks in the in the project in the development, but also they they all will be hosting the cloud. And that means in practice that uh, for the import process we have decided to have only one of them being the, the ingester, and that is, let's say, Sinica. So it means that all the replication managers will talk to Sinica. And we do that because to lower the risk that we have different machine, different machinery. So we want the ingestion to be, let's say, uh, uh, riskless or less risk, and therefore we use only Sinica. But once it lands at Sinica, then there will be a horizontal replication between the different uh, UDAT centers. So they do a horizontal, that means that the whole collection will be hosted at five locations. And then there is some sort of a load balancing for the users. If they search and uh, want to download data, then the load balancer depend, the, you know, determines which of the centers will deliver. And the users will not know that, of course. The users will not see a difference because it's simply a yeah, load balancer. It means that this is an automatic process. It, uh, and this is uh, done uh, if we have a lot of users, let's say, simply for performance reasons and also for a technical reason, because we would like to uh, we like to play a little bit with, with these uh, <laughs> these mechanisms. If you look at the installed base, these are the, the dots on the map of the present uh, centers in uh, Europe that are using or have installed the, the, the download manager or the uh, interim solution. And it's uh, quite a good spread eh, all over Europe. And uh, in total, there are now more than 110. And they all have come aboard by uh, one of the many projects that we do. So we have the, the core crew, let's say the CDATANET crew, but also we have the Amonet lots, we have the GeoSeeds, we have the Black Sea Scene, we have Casp Info, we have uh, many other projects, and there will be more projects coming by which new data centers enter the, the equation and they, they join the network. And they also use this uh, infrastructure to to publish, to, to make their data known, and to, to uh, distribute their data. And, that, and that, that has a great uptake. It's uh, both in, so we have more than 2 million, but also there's a great uptake of the data itself by various uh, applications and by various users. If you look at these, uh, in the installed base itself, we have now uh, 89 nodes that have a download manager. We have 23 nodes with an interim solution. That means that interim is in fact meant as an interim. It was meant like a first step in, in uh, some projects. And we hope, of course, that some of the interim will decide to go for replication manager because it, it, uh, it's, it's quite easy now. And others, we uh, say we keep them as an interim because they have some, you know, some policy reasons at their institute which don't allow them to, to install any uh, external software, if that happens. And we have one node with own software, and that's somewhere yeah, we have to uh, talk to them and see how we can abolish. Because you understand if you have your own software, you always are behind. Let's say in the first version, you're okay. The next version, the next version, the next version, you always are getting behind more and more about the functionality because it's very difficult to share all the functionality in, in own software as well. That's the same with Mikado. If you have Mikado, Mikado has many uh, versions. Every time there's uh, some bugs or some new functionality, and if you are doing it all yourself, and you, you don't use Mikado, then I would say, yeah, why? You're not very efficient because you can use Mikado as an engine for validation of your metadata and also for generating, while some of the other tasks, the mapping, etc., you, you might do with your own software. But use Mikado as the engine because it's always up to date. And if you want to trail that with your own software, you really have to trail it and you will have discrepancies over time. It's, uh, it's not uh, very efficient. But anyway. Important for the implementation is that we have this big group, so we have to manage together with you, that uh, with the help desk, which is at Maris and at Ifremer, that we give you support, and also the tools, of course, the instructions have to be very clear, so you can do a lot yourself. And we have quite a challenge because we want to do it in in uh, six months, so till the end of this year. And at the same time, we want to keep the normal system running. So that means that we want you to keep on running your system because there are users, but also we want you to keep updating or bringing in new data if, if, if applicable, if you have them. And that's uh, something we uh, will manage in parallel. In the file, there is a, an overview of all these data centers. And that's why I said, please make a copy. Because in there, we describe uh, which version or what connection you are running. 
a download manager or uh, the type. And also it, it gives you um, a little bit of an overview how uh, partners are you know, came to our, our group by different projects. So it could be Cdata, it could be GUCs, it could be Ewonet. So there are many ways that people are uh, in this group here together, the 60 and also the 50 before, that came by one or more of those projects. And of course what we try to do is, uh, is always find new projects to, you know, to keep everybody happy, you would say, happy, also in a financial sense. And not only in the in the, the sense that they that their data is being published, but also that they're happy because they play a role in the, in a financial sense. And and of course, as you know, the the more successful the infrastructure, the more chances and we opportunity we have, let's say, to reach this. And there will be in the in the new uh, there is now talk about FP9, the new framework program, and they talk about the blue cloud concept. So the marine domain as a blue cloud. And by, uh, we think we are well qualified and well uh, positioned, let's say, to also play a role in this. And we hope that the Blue Cloud becomes a program. It becomes, let's say, a rollout of several projects, all dedicated to marine data and applications and services. And that's something that we are lobbying, and not only us, but also UDOT and also others are, uh, are lobbying for such an approach. But of course, it's, it, it, we have to find, uh, let's say, the. We have to find some uh, good people at the uh, EU in Brussels that listen to us and uh, want to uh, implement, but so far, so good, I would say. So, um, have faith in this. But anyway, look at this table, because you will find your own center in there. I will not go in detail, but it's quite a list. We have now 114. And in fact, quite recently, we had, uh, we had one new uh, partner, the Marine Biological Association, the former SAFOS from the UK. They also connected, and they... Um, they have for the moment only one data set, but they are now working on uh, on getting more data sets. But they, they did the download manager install, 1.47. And they, they came, in fact, by, uh, yeah, simply because they, they want to make the data also public through CDATA. And that's how they came in. If we look at the activities that are in the implementation plan, we have, first of all, the tactical team has to do quite some finalizing. So we have a couple of uh, months ahead of us during the summer holiday, so that means uh, up and down with the teams. But we have to find a way to, to bring the, to finalize the technical developments to make them more robust. So the import uh, process has to become fully robust. Uh, the replication manager has to be fully, uh, let's say, documented, fully uh, uh, finalized and, and uh, available with instructions how to install. And also, uh, of course, we have the front. But first of all, we want to do the back end because the back end has the most uh, is the most uh, opportune that we have our systems all running because then we can ask you to to do the uptake and start installing, connecting yourself. And that's the second action, and that action will start in fact in September. So early September, you will receive, let's say, the instructions, the guidance, and also links where you can download the the you know, let's say the replication manager. And at that time, we also will have set up, or there is operational, the test, uh, the test uh, environment to which you can connect them in parallel to your normal download manager. So your normal operation goes on, but this is in, in parallel. And we don't need a lot of data. We just need a few data sets to see if it works, eh, to test out the connection. And as I said, and also Peter said, that the expectations are that, that this time it will take you uh, very little time to install. As long as you read the manual, because the manual it has some some items about configuration and settings, and you really cannot find out yourself. You you need some help there to to read. And also we hope that the virtual appliance, which is like a container, a container also having the operating system inside, so uh, that that will make your life even easier. That uh, and already some people speak about 10 minutes to 50 minutes to to install it if you follow the manual, of course. It's, uh, and I know for a lot of technicians that's very difficult. They always try uh, trial and error, but please read the manual. <laughs> okay, then we have uh, something else. There was already uh, somebody asked about this. Uh, Ray, I think, he said, uh, how are we going to move the whole database? Because um, we have 2.1 million, we have uh, 110 data centers. They have over time, they brought in a lot of data. In the new setup, also we want to have uh, more flavors. That means that if we have ODV, we also want NetCDF, CData NetCDF, and in some cases also MetAtlas. So it means in practice that we're talking about maybe four or five million uh, five mile data files for two point something metadata files. So it's quite a big operation. 
So we have a task, let's say, in uh, validating and making that database ready, and then make sure that it's connected to the new system. So that the moment that we turn the switch, that the data is there, the metadata is there, the connections are there, and the users are there. And that, that's, uh, that's the ideal plan that we are working on. And that's, let's say, by January 2019 planned. So we have some timing. So in July, August, we're going to work on this import cycle, making it fully robust. Also uh, doing the restricted one. Say so far you've seen the unrestricted, but also the restricted has to uh, work. Let's say but, but where, whereby the data re resides at you, but of course the metadata only. Um, we're gonna the replication manager, and then so from September until the end of the year, we roll out the uh, the replication managers and the interim. And in fact, in uh, communication with each of you, we're gonna install them and test them. And that means that each month, on average, we need 30 nodes to be connected. So we have four months. That means every month we need uh, about 30. At the same time, because we expect it to be much more easy, we don't need so much support, we think. We can uh, help you in, uh, you know, we can do it with a few instructions and then see what happens. And of course, the first group will set the scene. I say the first group will be a couple of uh, core partners. Of core, I mean people who are close to the fire. They will try it out, and if it really works as we hope it works, then we are quite confident that it's much easier for the others to, to pick up and uh, install. And also with your dedication, let's say your engagement, that it, we will make that happen. The same in parallel, we do it with the interim solution, because uh, we also have to set it up, and we have to find some ways to ingest the data for the interim solution. And uh, as I say, I hope that the interim, many of the restricted data also decide to make it unrestricted, because that would be very helpful. Because so far it was, interim was default restricted, simply because of the principle, but now we have this cache, and we can load this cache also with, uh, with unrestricted data from interim. And in those cases, the help desk will help. Let's say CDI support desk will be your intermediary to get your data into that system in those cases. But there will be full instructions available uh, before uh, September. And then, of course, we have to test thoroughly that, uh, that all the connections work. So we have the test domain, which will be an operational domain in, in the, at Seneca. And there we can see that everything works, that, so you can upload your data and you can, uh, we can find them. In the meantime, we also work on the front, because after the lunch, we'll show you the, the beta version of the front, the new user interface, complete new development. And we want you to help us to refine that. So it means that there is already we already set up a database with about 300,000 uh, data files from Shom and from Ivermeer. They have both lines, polygons as uh, no lines and uh, and uh, points. And and then we want you to play around with it and also give us comments, give us bugs. And there is a there is a survey form, online survey form where you can can use it today, but also uh, in the weeks to come. And we will. Uh, yeah, we will harvest from there every time the comments and try to, from there, improve the interface. Also, we have our own list already. We have a snack list of things to do. And that's an, a continuous process. So once in a while, you will see that the interface will be updated, 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 and getting better and better and better. And also, we are working in the meantime on this quality control, because we, as we said, we have some uh, central quality control and some conversion uh, items. And we already have uh, software, because the Octopus software that you are using locally uh, for, uh, for file checking and file uh, conversions from one format to the other can also be used uh, in the, as a Docker, in a Docker container online. So it's quite nice. So we have the same software which we can run in the cloud as the software that you use on your, uh, your offline machine, your uh, own machine. But in addition, we need to make some, some, uh, yeah, some additional applications which are not in, in Octopus and that also has to be tested. Then we have the, yeah, in fact, the database. And what we have been doing, and that's also something we did already in Amonet. For Amonet, we, we made so-called buffers. We had robot harvesting. And that means that we, uh, at Mars, we already harvested yeah, almost all the data which is unrestricted because of Amonet. And what we are doing right now is we are, uh, we have another robot running now, completing that, that collection. So what you will see, at your, if you check, you will see that there is a lot of shopping going on by the robot to the unrestricted data and bringing those data sets to a buffer. 
And there's a buffer of uh, 1.85 uh, million files. And what we are doing already is uh, we are running checks on, on, the, on that buffer with Octopus. And those results we are, will communicate to you if we see some errors or some issues. And then we ask you, piecemeal, to, to, uh, to, to correct those, those errors. And then set, yeah, put a new uh, version there. Update your metadata, your CDI, and then the robot will say, hey, there's something new. I will get the latest version and overrides the previous version. And that's something we're already doing for uh, quite some years in Emonet. And now we want to do it also for, for, uh, for the CDATNet. Uh, so we are, and right now, uh, my colleague said we are missing right now about 100,000 files from the total, while the rest is already uh, landed. And those 100,000 are coming from, I think, 10 or 12 uh, data centers, and they are being approached now by the robot. And if, if, the, if their machine is working fine, they don't notice it, simply uh, it's being harvested. And of course, they can check in the, repli in the request status manager to see it's going, but they don't have to do any uh, manual interaction unless there are some issues or there are some coupling table issues. That also happens, eh, that we notice that a few files are published, but there is no corresponding data set or the coupling table is not up to date. That, that could be the place. So it's a nice check to make it complete. And then the follow-up. And the follow-up, we really need your effort. So it's not only you connecting to the new system, but also you helping us to, to uh, improve the data sets uh, as we following the, the results we get from the checks. And you understand we can only check, let's say, the CDATNet files, let's say the the files of the ODV and the NetCDF, but we cannot check sets Y or, uh, or other uh, exotic files, because that's something we don't have the capabilities for this. But So you will not get error reports there. It's simply we can get them or we can't get them. It's, uh, that's the only thing. But our focus is on these ODV files, you would say. Then in November, December, because we, we think we still have to do some finalizing, so it's a running train, eh? because you keep on sending also new data, and they will be picked up by the harvest, and so the, the database is getting bigger, they are checked. Uh. <coughs> but then we are in November, December, we want to freeze the, the update and the, and the new, just to give us some time to do the final checks and the final conversions, to make the whole database ready for the, the let's say, the, the, the new launch. And that means in November, December, you can't send us new data. Of course, you can prepare new data, but you have to wait till, let's say, January before we uh, keep on going again. But in the meantime, of course, you can help us, to say, repairing data, because that, that's, that might be still the case. Then November, December, as I say, we then make the database complete. For, for We call it the V0 database, the, the version 0. And that will be the database that will be the, uh, oh yeah, that will power the new interface then for the outside world in January. And that means from that point on, we will work with versioning, because we start with version 0, so this is the original, only one version of the metadata, one version of the data. <coughs> then the new system is launched in January. And from that point on, if you do an update, or you do a, if you do an update, it will create a new version, both of the metadata and the data. And they will be stored also in the cloud, and they will be visible for visitors. As I said before, the users will always search in the latest version, so the database will always, the, the, the CDI will work with the latest version. But in the metadata, there will be a reference to older versions, and they are also uh, available, both for checking as well as for downloading. And for that purpose, we have some sort of uh, extra coupling table to, to, keep, uh, yeah, to keep everything in, uh, co consistently uh, together. And, and the cloud doesn't, yeah, they get some PIDs, and... Uh, and the cloud doesn't care, eh? let's say, more PIDs, and they're so somewhere in, on the cloud, it's okay. But we have, to, we have the strings with the connection with the CDI to, to pull them out, and we know also the version. Then. And that's also one of the reasons, is because we have, some, uh, yeah, we have this provenance uh, challenge, because if we look at the MSFD process, the Marine Strategy Framework, uh, they do uh, assessments of a C area for the good environmental status, and they use data in a certain moment. If they're a couple of years later, somebody says, I want to repeat the same analysis, they must have the same version of the data. 
And the same you have as a scientist. Let's say you're doing your, your thesis or you do an analysis, you make a nice report. You want to be sure that the data you used are still uh, available for doing exactly the same ex exercise. While there might be a new version, and if you look in the case of EuroArco, eh, EuroArco is uh, there are many new versions every time. They say they they have the data, they're being published, and then a few months later there's a reanalysis, and then there's a new version of the data from the same float. And and then we in in the new system we are able to to follow this and and uh, you know, keep track of this, and make it for the users uh, even more interesting. I would say. But that's only in the new system. Let's say up till then. We still work with only one version, and uh, we try to make the best. And when we have it, then it will, uh, you could say, it start multiplying if, if there are updates. So as I said, we have six months, quite challenging, and uh, I hope you're up to the challenge. At least we are, uh, <laughs> we are teaming up for this. And uh, it's, yeah, let's say we can't do it without you. At the same time, is if you if you. Yeah, read well the manual and we give you very good instructions and we give you good tools then it should not be so difficult it should not be uh, as long as you keep your head with it and you say i'm uh, i want it i want to make a good job i want my data to be ready for the new system so it means we need your full cooperation and we need your engagement both for first of all setting up your connection then helping us with uh, validating and correcting your data so you can already start validating your data yourself eh? it's uh, also tomorrow and uh, yesterday we talked about this, that you can use the tools like Octopus yourself and also Mikado in case, let's say, to, to check already the quality of your uh, data and metadata. And if you think yourself is not correct, you can already start correcting or you can wait for us to ask you to do because we will <laughs> use the same tools. So it, uh, And the last thing is that we want you to be fully uh, informed and uh, fully uh, engaged also in the process of tuning the, the systems. Uh, helping us with starting with the interface, try it out, show it to your colleagues, uh, ask their opinion, and, and give us a lot of suggestions, or if something doesn't work, also tell us, because there, there are still bugs, of course, there are errors, or there are missing functions. It's, uh, but it's, uh, that's progress. And, uh, and if you all do this, let's say, then we'll make this, and then by the end of uh, the year, early January 2019, we'll be, uh, we'll be proud to open the new uh, system, and also we have to make sure that on all the Emonet portals they also will work still, but I think there will not be an issue. We, we are geared up for this. Okay, any questions from your side? You, are you up to this challenge, all of you? Can I see hands? Who is not? <laughs> Can I otherwise see hands who are? Who wants to join this? Ah, Lil, what's going on? I would expect more enthusiasm. <laughs> okay, but I, I know some of you are very uh, shy in other sense, but very dedicated, and that's also important. Any questions from, from your side about the planning or uh, items? Because there will be a follow-up, of course, from the training. Let's say we have already uh, all the PowerPoints on the, on the Ocean Teacher and also on the on the Cidata Cloud website. But there will be, um, yeah, after the training, we will send out some messages. And then, of course, early uh, yeah, end of August, early September, there will be the real instructions what, what to do. And then from that moment on, we expect you to be uh, yeah, fully geared up and, uh, and uh, understanding. And like I say, it's, it's an adventure, but it's not, um, but it's, it's quite a challenging adventure, but also it's uh, rewarding, I think, because we are, the, we are really, the data are being used in many, many ways. And more and more, the, the member states, uh, the governance, let's say, the the higher level understands the importance of these infrastructures. And it's not just a project, it's more, it's an operational infrastructure. And with your enthusiasm and your dedication, we'll be able to, to serve the quality that's needed. And that will mean also that will be used more, and, uh, and by using more, there will be more opportunities to, to do more. And that's, uh, that's how it works in, uh, in the European landscape. No questions? No? Okay. I guess you're hungry or something. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe if, if somebody has some questions, of course, during lunch or the rest of the day, we're always available for, uh, for you to ask the individual questions if you want. Okay? <laughs>